Over the years, there's been one question that has persisted more than any other when it comes to Walt Disney World, and that question usually involves the idea of a fifth park. And although no one could possibly answer the what or the when part of that question, the part of the question that we can actually answer with some degree of accuracy is where it could be located. And so today, let's dive in and discuss the possible locations of where Disney could build a fifth park at Walt Disney World up next. Hi there, Waltoneers. I'm Jack, and this is DS1 Newscast. And if you're new to the channel, then be sure to subscribe down below and check out the official Waltoneer Club over on Patreon. But before we get into the possible locations of where Disney could build a fifth park, we must first discuss the reason for why Disney would want to build a fifth park in the first place. As it's been over 25 years since Disney last decided to expand Walt Disney World by constructing and opening their fourth theme park, Disney's Animal Kingdom, in 1998. And since then, we've seen new lands and attractions open across all four of the existing parks. But nothing has been on the scale of a completely new theme park which is actually kind of odd when you compare it to the rapid rate of expansion that Walt Disney World underwent from 1971 up through 1998, as Disney built and opened a new theme park in under 10 year intervals of each other. But of course, that rate of expansion wasn't going to be sustainable forever. And so Disney's supply to demand ratio for new theme parks was obviously going to eventually max out. As after all, they have four theme parks, two water parks, and a substantial shopping district that all require a cyclical renovation and enhancement strategy to ensure that they remain fresh, relevant, and interesting to attract repeat visitation. However, there will come a tipping point in the future where continuing the expansion investment strategy for the existing parks will begin to result in ever-diminishing returns as there is a very fine balance between the uppermost limit that Disney can charge for a theme park ticket and the amount that the guest is willing to pay for that admission before Disney then begin to see a flatlining in their return on investment. Therefore, the only logical way that Disney's going to be able to unlock that next level of revenue is going to be to add a new theme park, or gate, as it's referred to in the industry. But adding a fifth park doesn't come without its problems either, as although a new theme park would give the resort additional capacity, it doesn't necessarily mean that there would be a drastic increase in overall yearly attendance, as instead it will likely just mean that the guests will be dispersed out even more around the parks. Then the other issue with adding a fifth park is the risk of saturation within the marketplace, leading to a cannibalization of profits, as the truth of the matter is that people do not have unlimited vacation days or a bottomless pit for their budgets. And so building more theme parks might lead to people sacrificing days at existing parks they have been to countless times before. But that's the thing about building another park, as if it's packaged correctly from a pricing standpoint, then Disney could charge more for a park hopper bundle ticket with a fifth park, even if it does mean that guests end up skipping a day at one of the existing parks. Which means more than likely at some point in the future, Disney will end up wanting to build a fifth park, as it's the only way that they can get that extra level of revenue growth in the long term. And look, I know that there's this whole situation going on at the moment over this past year between the Florida governor Ron DeSantis and the Walt Disney Company, where DeSantis has punished Disney for voicing opposition to his education legislation by targeting Disney's self-governing municipality called the Reedy Creek Improvement District that self-funds and self-operates the emergency services, construction permits, permitting, waterworks, sewage, roadworks and maintenance of Disney's 27,000 acres of property. And in turn, Disney has now filed a lawsuit against DeSantis and his allies on the grounds that the punitive action was unconstitutional, as it impinged upon an entity's First Amendment right to freedom of speech. But rest assured, after what is going to be a prolonged and protracted legal battle, sooner or later, that whole situation is going to resolve itself. 
and when it does, Disney will still want to invest in Walt Disney World as they will need to remain competitive against the likes of Universal Orlando, which is currently in the midst of building a third theme park in addition to their two theme parks and one water park, as the brand new Epic Universe Park is scheduled to open in summer of 2025. And because of this increased competition, Disney is having to start to think about longer term growth, and evidence of this is that Disney has repeatedly stated that they have tentative plans to invest $17 billion in Walt Disney World over the next decade. And to add even more smoke where there's fire, earlier this year Disney asked Reedy Creek again for approval to build one major park and two smaller parks, such as water parks, within the 2032 land use plan which isn't confirmation that Disney is definitely building a fifth park, but instead asking for permission is something that Disney has done in previous decades as well, as it then gives them the flexibility to move forward if everything lines up, like the correct theme, overwhelming demand for a fifth park, and an easy pathway for a return on investment in building it. But before we go any further, we've got to do what Disney would do, and that's conduct a type of feasibility study of our own. And the three main parameters which I think we need to keep in mind when trying to search for this perfect location is adequate size, suitable land for construction, and overall infrastructure support. And so let's tackle the first part of that, and that is establishing a suitable size for a fifth park. And I'm not just talking about the areas that we, the guests, can see, but you also have to include the guest parking, bus loops, and all of the backstage supporting infrastructure such as cast member areas, offices, and cast member parking into the equation. So in order of smallest to largest, it goes Disney's Hollywood Studios with 230 acres, Magic Kingdom with 330 acres, Animal Kingdom with 350 acres, although there is the big caveat here that a lot of that space in Animal Kingdom is used for animal conservation space, otherwise Magic Kingdom would technically be larger if you just measured the theme park area. And then lastly, we have Epcot with a colossal footprint that encompasses approximately 400 acres. But we shouldn't just draw comparisons based upon the Disney parks, but we should also consider Epic Universe that is under construction seven miles down the road. As when you measure that theme park area, parking lot and backstage infrastructure, it equates to around 250 acres out of the available 750 acre plot of land that Universal has acquired. But do bear in mind that the rest of that acreage is to support backstage operations of all of Universal Orlando. And it will also feature many new hotels on that site as well. And so let's say that if and when Disney do decide to build a fifth park, they would need at least a piece of land that was comparable in size to Disney's Hollywood Studios or the theme park component of Epic Universe. Which means we're looking for a parcel of land that has around 200 acres of available space. However, we can't just pull up a map and start randomly pointing to parcels of land that look big enough for a 200 acre theme park. But then, this has to pass the second part of the feasibility study and and that is the suitable land for construction. And that's where this bad boy comes in handy, the Reedy Creek Improvement District 2032 Land Use Plan. And yes, I know that Reedy Creek doesn't exist anymore and that the land use plan was nullified, but Here's the thing, as it was only updated within the past year, which means that this is an incredibly accurate document to use to find the suitable areas for construction around Walt Disney World property, all thanks to this composite suitability ratings map. And as luck would have it, there just so happens to be three locations that are large enough to sustain the theme park infrastructure and are conveniently marked as suitable for construction. So let's take to the artificial skies of Google Earth to explore this even further. And the first thing to know is that not all of these locations that I'm about to talk about are created equal in terms of feasibility. So through a process of elimination, let's work out which is the most likely location that Disney would choose for a fifth park at Walt Disney World. Beginning with this 170 acre plot of land that's located just off Western Way. As despite it having a good size, there are quite a few issues that would make it the least likely location for Disney to construct a new theme park. With the first downside being that it backs directly on to the animal conservation area of Animal Kingdom. Meaning that there would be no room for any potential expansion in the future without encroaching into Animal Kingdom's necessary conservation area. 
Then, along the same line of thought as that, the close proximity to Animal Kingdom would also make it untenable for the use of any pyrotechnics in nighttime shows, and there would also be the possible problem of noise and light pollution affecting the animals' environments. Then the next issue is where it's located. As despite it being slap bang in the center of Walt Disney World property, which would be a net positive from a transportation perspective as it would cut down on the travel time between the four other parks, the locations surrounding road infrastructure would need a lot of work to support the high traffic capacity that a new theme park would generate. As you see, Western Way is the main road that connects the Disney parks to Flamingo Crossings, and this is where the majority of Disney College program cast members live. And so already, this intersection that connects the end of Western Way to Buena Vista Drive is extremely busy and congested in the morning and at the end of workday. So adding even more strain to this road network would require substantial traffic infrastructure upgrades. Then the last two remaining reasons why this location isn't ideal is because it's opposite Disney's large-scale water treatment and waste and sewage facility, which would obviously carry some very unwanted odors across from that site to the new theme park, which would definitely not be welcomed. And then lastly, this location is also where Disney currently has their arboretum and plant nursery to grow all types of trees and plants that will then be used for landscaping across all four of the parks, which would then require Disney to find a new location which would be suitable to do all of that. So overall, I would say that the Western Way site is the least favorable option. But then that brings us to the next possible location where Disney could build a fifth park. And it's this 200 acre parcel of land that's located just off of World Drive North, right next to Magic Kingdom's Parking Toll Plaza entrance. And in terms of existing infrastructure feasibility, this location has a lot going for it as the proximity to Magic Kingdom means that a fifth park wouldn't require an all-new infrastructure build-out like what would be required with the Western Way location, as instead it would obviously share a lot of that already with the Magic Kingdom. Although a flip side to that argument could be that it would put too much strain on this part of Walt Disney World property, causing an unknown amount of problems for not just a new Disney park, but also creating complications for their most visited park, which Disney would obviously want to avoid. Then, the other issue with this site is that it would be extremely close to the Fort Wilderness campgrounds, which, much like the Western Way option, the theme park's noise and light pollution might impinge upon the tranquility of the nature-themed resort. Then the other thing of note here is within this plot of land, there is an iconic piece of Walt Disney World history that not everyone knows about. As tucked away among the trees is the Stoll Airport runway, which dates back to the beginning of Walt Disney World. As back in 1971, this short takeoff and landing runway was used to transport guests directly from a larger regional airport shared with the McCoy Air Force Base, which is the Orlando International Airport, to Walt Disney World. However, the runway stopped being operational once the monorail extension to Epcot was under construction. And so, considering the site's historical significance to Walt Disney World, I think this would be a pretty cool location for a type of Disney legacy park, which could then celebrate Disney's illustrious history and bring to life Disney's past, resurrecting former attractions with the latest technological advancements and building unrealized concepts that live on in the mythology of Disney park lore. But despite all of that potential opportunity that this 200 acre parcel of land holds, for close proximity to Magic Kingdom would likely be more of a hindrance than a net benefit. As not only would a fifth park in this location likely be overshadowed by Magic Kingdom, but it would also probably be far too risky for Disney to build a fifth park within the Magic Kingdom's sphere of influence, which could mean disrupting Walt Disney World's crown jewel. Therefore, I would say that these 200 acres have a fairly good chance of being developed into something at some point. But a project like a new hotel or resort that would be complementary to Magic Kingdom would be a much better option instead. And then last, but certainly not least, is what I consider to be the most realistic, most feasible, and most favorable location where Disney could build a fifth park at some point in the future. 
And to get there, we have to travel all the way down World Drive, past Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios to the other end of property, as it's here, level with the Walt Disney World welcome sign, situated right next to ESPN's Wide World of Sports complex. That is where the perfect location is for a fifth park to be built at Walt Disney World. As you see, within this very large parcel of land is approximately 230 acres that are suitable for construction. And yet the only thing that currently occupies the site is just a small part of the land that is this parking lot tucked away out of guest sight, that is used for construction worker parking, machinery storage, and a miscellaneous backstage staging area, which could very easily be relocated to another part of Disney property, freeing up the entire area. But then, from a road infrastructure standpoint, it is directly in the middle of the four other parks. And thanks to this clover leaf exchange it means that a new theme park in this location would be accessible on both the x and y axis as obviously world drive is the road that's used to get to epcot and magic kingdom and then osceola parkway is used to get to hollywood studios and animal kingdom which means that from a location perspective it is ideal. Then the next thing to consider is connecting a fifth park to the existing guest transportation network. And this offers a fantastic opportunity to expand the Disney Skyliner service, as it would only require around 4,500 feet of additional cabling and pylons to connect a fifth park to the Hollywood Studio Station, and only 6,000 feet to connect it to the Hourglass Lake Station for Pop Century and Art of Animation. However, on top of that, if the fifth park had a sky Skyliner hub station of its own, it could then serve as an important connection hub, opening the Skyliner service up to the All-Star Resorts, then on to Animal Kingdom, and possibly even Coronado Springs as well, which would be a massive benefit to the Skyliner service. But more than all of this, the reason why this 230-acre parcel of land is so perfect for a fifth park is because of the boundless possibilities that it offers, as it would not require the removal of the ESPN complex, so Disney could continue to operate the business unaffected. But if at some point in the future, they concluded that there would be more revenue from expanding the theme park instead of keeping Wide World of Sports open, then there would also be room for the fifth park to grow and expand over time as well. Therefore, if and when Disney do decide to expand Walt Disney World by building a brand new theme park, it seems extremely likely that the location where it's going to be built would be at the end of World Drive South right next to ESPN's Wide World of Sports complex. But now, it's over to you, the Waltoneers, as I would like to know, out of those three locations, which would you like to see Disney build a fifth park at that site? And also, let's really put on our armchair imagineering hats here, and what would you like to see in terms of a fifth park at Walt Disney World? And so, that's it for today. So, if you've enjoyed this long, deep dive into this topic, then be sure to give this video a massive thumbs up, share this video with a friend, and check out the rest of the videos on the channel, and also consider joining the official Waltoneer Club over on Patreon, Patreon, as I'm probably going to end up discussing my fifth park ideas over there at some point soon as well. And I'd also like to say thank you to all the Waltoneers over on Patreon and the Waltoneer Gold members. And with all that being said, I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon. <laughs>